Hey, it's the Chick with Beats here with the one, the only, Nate OG Detroit. How you doing? Doing good, sis. Appreciate you having me on. Good, good, good. Yeah, we're glad to have you. Uh, for those out there listening, Nate OG Detroit is a producer by way of uh, Detroit, of course, right? Right. <laughs> All right, that's what's up. So why don't you uh, let our listeners know how long have you been into production? Yeah, so this will be my 13th year um, as of December 7th, which is actually the exact day that I got my high MPC 1000 drum machine sampler in the mail. Mm. Remember the day to a T. That's, that's awesome, especially a, uh-huh. a beauty like that one. <laughs> yep. Yeah, what so, initially sparked your love for production? You know, it actually started with my father. He was a bass guitar player, and um, we had to throw him like a like a surprise birthday party and we invited my dad's side of fam this was when I was in Detroit we invited my dad's side of fam which is where I live in Holland to come and uh him and my uncle Emery were playing their guitar so they was in a band together you know that's why I was even thought of so you know seeing the uh witnessing the power of music and how to change person's mood and how you know energy in the room and everything that's when I initially became interested in music that's what's up. Who are some of your musical influences? Well, of course, my dad. Um, lots of Dilla, lots of Black Milk, Hollow Brown, 14KT, Ninth Wonder, DJ Premier, Quincy Jones, Michael Jackson, um, Kanye West. Old college dropout Kanye West, of course. I don't know what he's on now, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that'd, be, that'd be um that'd be about it. Very much, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I see you on, on the Kanye there. That's been a, a familiar sentiment amongst uh, many people. But uh, yeah. so speaking of Kanye, you know, we know about the whole supposedly presidential bid and whatever. But you know, being an artist during these times, how do you stay motivated to continue to produce music? Um. No, really, it's just, uh, just, I guess, like, inspiration, new inspiration from, um, about six weeks ago, I had to bury two of my aunts, like, six weeks apart from each other. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And, uh, mm-hmm. that's, um, that's been, like, motivating me to keep, to keep going, because that's what they want me to do. You know, they wouldn't want me to, like, sit around and just wait for my guests and you know, my talent, you know, just bring everything mm-hmm. to a standstill, because I've come so far, you know, and... You know, life, life is, uh, tomorrow's not promised, so every day I gotta do some kind of music related. <laughs> if it ain't, uh, you know, digging through records, uh, making drum kits, or, you know, updating SoundCloud, Bandcamp, and YouTube, you know, it's all, it's all passion based for me, it's real personal, you know mm-hmm. what I mean, so. Good, 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 you know, one of the things that's been hard for a lot of creatives is not being able to do the live shows as frequently as we were able to, you know, as far as uh, being a producer, you know, getting out there, kind of navigating, shaking hands, meeting people, trying to see, you know, if your music style is gel and whatnot. How has that been affecting you personally? It's affected me a little bit because I was just really getting into doing live beat sets back home. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm looking forward to I'm not sure how this, this pandemic is going to pan out. If this is just going to be the quote unquote new normal for now, you know, because mm-hmm. it looks like, you know, it looks like there's no cure in sight. But they're apparently working on it. But, uh, you know, I'm hoping to get back to doing live beat set. As far as working with artists, it's pretty easy because I still have email. You know, I can still send beats out, you know, mm-hmm. do it that way. I just can't, like, take a trip to Detroit right now because it's one of the hot spots as far as, mm-hmm. you know, the, the COVID. So. Kind of limits my mobility as far as getting up there to work with artists and cast on these things and meet people and stuff. So, but I do have a, I do have a ladder named uh, Piece who actually um, he's a Detroit legend. He he actually battled uh, Eminem and that's what led Eminem to go to L.A. for that uh, rap Olympics battle where he got discovered by Drake mm-hmm. around that time. Mm-hmm. So he's tied to everybody in Detroit. But I want to work with like Fat Cat, but everybody. So, you know what I mean? So, I just made that move last year as far as I don't live in Detroit no more. I need a representative there. So, he's been doing, 
also give me a, a lot of production work and stuff like that. That's what's up. That's what's up. You know, let's talk a little bit about Detroit and the music scene there. You know, there's there's been so much talent that's been nestled there forever and then that generation of talent breeded new generations of talent and so forth you know what's what's uh one of the things that inspires you about being from detroit like how does that influence your sound specifically you know a lot of it's like energy like space you know what i mean it got um you know detroit and everything that you see on the news it's 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 a struggle sometimes you know as far as finances and but it's not like the residents' fault as, as far as how the city's been run down. It's really the people who who's on like the city council who charge of where the money diverse to, you know, for the infrastructure. You know what I mean? So a lot of time I gain my inspiration just from being around, you know, like creative individuals. You know, when I go to Detroit, I'm usually at a hotel. I don't drive, so I always catch the bus. But they always come through. All the artists always come through to hang out and listen to beats and stuff like that, or you know, pick up these CDs and stuff like that. So, you know, life, just the Detroit life inspired me because we're still like chasing that Motown, that new Motown era is what, I'm, what I want to call it. Mm. You know, they said it couldn't be done again, but I'm a firm believer that it can be done again. And if we get that shot and cast a big enough light, we'll run it just equally as long as the Motown era lasted, you know, from the 50s to the time they moved out of Detroit. So that's what I'm chasing, that thing, because we're all like Motown grandkids. Imagine a lot of people for his person so fast. I start looking at it like that too. Right, right. Now that's an excellent point. And you know, um, just with the importance of soul music as far as hip hop goes, like you know, it still just lives on. It's just another way to consume it, and yeah. well, that's a beautiful thing. So, uh, you know, what's next in the pipeline for you? I mean, you know pre-pandemic if possible but if, even if this does last a little bit longer we gotta chill before actually going to the shows you know what's what's next on the agenda for NATO G D Detroit um I just recently actually last month of my birthday July 3rd I actually dropped my first lo-fi album um and it's on um Google Play Amazon um iTunes Apple Music and I submitted to Pandora and I got approved it's also on Spotify. It's called Filth Farm Filth LP V1, like from Volume 1. And the, the title came from that uh, that skit about Eddie Murphy talking to um, Bill Cosby, and he's telling him about how he cussed in the show. <laughs> so that's where I got the, the title for it from. You know, and the inspiration behind that, really, yeah. <laughs> and the inspiration behind that came from uh, uh, mainly Dylan's Rough Draft EP. And okay. then, you know, I got to listening to, like, Stolen Drums and Raji and DBIC and a couple other cats that, are, that um, I say, uh, Twami is the name of you, and um, Lean Lizzie was another dope one out of Atlanta, you know, so it's just, like, my take on that, my signature style of doing it, you know, just trying something different. That's what's up, that's what's up, you know, you know adding your flavor is, is the main thing to make hip-hop what it is, so, you know, you keep plugging away and doing what you're doing. Um, you had mentioned the platforms that your album is available. Would you also like to shout out, let the listeners know what social media they can follow you on? Yeah, uh, okay. Uh, Instagram and Twitter is at NATO G Detroit. You know, like all one word. You just type that in, I should be the only one to pop up. Um, YouTube is youtube.com slash N, like for a short for it's like the first initial of my first name for Nate. And then my last name, which is Oglesby, O-G-L-E-S-B-Y, and the number one. And on there, you'll find, like, I upload a lot of fish beats on there and beat-making videos and stuff like that. Because um, like I said in my Beats Brand of Life uh, interview, producer in- interview uh, last year, that with the invention of, like, Instagram and Facebook Live and all that, people really have been sleeping on um, YouTube. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And they cast a wider net because it's going to do so much with like a one minute event. You know what I mean? Right. And of course, they got, they got they got the IG Live, they got the IG TV, which I'm just recently starting to use. But yeah, it's just like, uh, it's avenues you can do to like expand your fan base and reach out to people. Um, yeah. That people are just taking for granted because of, you know, it might not be the newest, hottest thing, but. Absolutely. If there's still potential for you to reach who will enjoy your music you gotta take advantage of it definitely yep. 
So do you have right. any advice for any music artists out there right now or, you know, just kind of looking for some positivity and how to get through this and still be creative? Yeah. One, two things. One is originality. You know, uh, we all are created with something in us. I call it like a light or like a, I, I believe every person has some kind of artistic gift. You know, and it might take us a while to discover. Like I was 28 before I found mine at music. So, you know, I believe in, you know, this, don't buy off the next man or copy, you know what I mean? Carbon copy the next person. Because once that turn fades, you know, you're going to fade along with it. That applies to anything in the entertainment business. You know, it's a lot of copycat stuff going on. One person gets the style, they get high signal. Ten million people are going to follow that. Um, the other thing will be, you know, patience. Learn to understand that you will have to pay dues in, when you get involved with the music business. You know what I mean? But also be up on your business aspect of the music, too, as far as, you know, the laws and, you know, how you get paid and, you know, things of that nature. Absolutely. Just, yeah, that's, that's, that's a, a huge thing is, you know, making sure that you stay educated so that way you don't get taken advantage of. You know, we've discussed this on, on Music Marvel before, but, yeah, the more people in the industry can confuse artists the easier it is to separate them for their money from their money so you know it's important exactly. that they educated you're 100% correct oh there was one last thing I was going to say um also whatever you do don't get cocky arrogant and start feeling yourself as mm. soon as you start that that's when your 15 minutes starts right, start winding down you know your 15 minutes of fame mm -hmm. you know what I mean the key the key is to be humble you know what I mean mm -hmm. um Humbleness, I, I got a tag that's like, hashtag that's like, humble as a new dope. You know what I mean? And yeah. Learn the art of that working and doing a proper relationship, you know, in the business and you'll go, you know what I mean? So. Right, 100%. Uh, you know, most of everything that you mentioned can be applied to producers as well, but is there anything that you would like to share with aspiring producers that are maybe just now getting their footing in the game and, you know, need some help to figure out how to find their own sound? That's something you can take notes of some of your favorite producers or musicians or just artists in general, music artists in general. You know, if it's something, you know, that you like to listen to, you know, study, like study your sound. Like, uh, like, how does he get his bass lines like that? Or, you know, how does he arrange his beat to, you know, make it seem so seamless when it's, you know, different changes and things like that. You know, there's the knowledge is out there, you know, and... When I got started, YouTube was really, I think YouTube was really getting getting started with the beat making videos and stuff. There wasn't a lot of tutorials out at that time, but you know, um, also, you don't have to have the latest, every time a, a drum machine or a VFT or <laughs> anything, a dog period drops, you don't have to run and um, run and cop it. You know, figure out what works for you. If you got Fruity Loops, you know, and you learn like it's the back of your hand. It's okay to like learn other things so you can be more versatile, but first master, you know, master whatever you're using and find what fits, you know, for the type of music you want to make. Right. That's awesome advice. Very awesome advice. It's uh, kind of funny too, you know, anytime you might be in different forums or platforms and you get to see people arguing about, you know, what software you should be using, what hardware you should be using. And <laughs> yeah, they, they were just burning that like on Facebook all the time, I'd be like, man, is he quiet? I'd be right. like, man, y'all, like, I was running this like a religious cult or something. Like, y'all trying to gain time for it. I'm like, uh. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, that's always a, a fun thread to watch unfold, usually. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so I guess before we wrap this up, just want to give you a chance to shout out anybody that you need to and give information to the listeners. All right. Um, for all my beat tapes, well, most of my beat tapes, aside from the lo-fi tape that's available um, for streaming, um, you can find most of my work at natogdetroit.bandcap.com. Um, also, most of my beats are actually uploaded um, to SoundCloud dot com um, forward slash Nate dash OG dash Detroit. Um, probably got like about two thousand, supposed to two thousand beats on there. Um, also got a shout out, um, my uncle Tony Smith of the Jay Dilla, James DeWitt Yancey Foundation. Um, he's, he's been a big help and, you know, giving me juice on the business and stuff like that. Um, shout out to my boy Troy Davis, aka the Davis Way. He's been schooling me on the business side of things for the last couple of years. 
Um, shout out to DJ Butter, DJ Dez, Merch Music. Um, see, don't miss somebody. Um, Black Peace, Low Lewis, Zoe, um, Beach, um, uh, the homie Cream of Beat, the homie Drugs Beat. Um, yeah, that's, that's just that, that's, that's pretty much, you want to shout out my city and, you know, and just um, continue to make it all proud and bring back good music, good quality music. Well, that's awesome. Well, we definitely appreciate having you on.